Hey everyone, Dan from FB Geeks here, and today I am really excited to be reviewing the new Wall Eversharp Skyline. Now, this particular model is out of the Technic collection, and it's the cobalt blue aluminum model. It also comes in black or natural aluminum. It features a semi-flexible stainless steel nib with a ceramic coating, and this particular pen has a gold-plated nib. Now, if you go for the black or aluminum pen, um, that will come with a black coated nib. These run about 265, and it's about in the middle of the Skylines. The uh, Skyliner 50s collection starts at about 150, and the high end is the award collection, which tops out at 365. Um, so there's definitely something for every budget there. So why am I so excited to be reviewing this pen? Well. The Skyline was an extremely popular fountain pen back in the 1940s. It first became available in 1941 and was on sale until about 1948 or 49. And by 1945, it was actually the most popular selling fountain pen in the US. So to see it brought back today it is just really, really cool. Now, over the years, uh, the Eversharp company has changed hands uh, several times. And there was a, a brief period where there was a reissue of the Skyline and I believe around 19. 1992 to 1998 and now it's back with uh, six different collections um, it's made from modern materials and it's got an awesome nib in it so let's take a closer look at this thing the new Walt Eversharp Skyline comes exceptionally well packaged uh, you could easily mistake this packaging for a pen that costs two or three times as much now if you notice the packaging is, is a little rough here um, that's because I was sent a demo package unit and it's it's been through a little bit but you can be assured that when you buy yours the packaging will be absolutely mint no scratches no dings no dents here you can see some bubble wrap that was included just for shipping purposes to make sure everything arrives safely but uh, taking a, a look at the packaging now in the lid you'll find a warranty card and also an information booklet that is actually very interesting. This is the first time I've ever read one from cover to cover. It would definitely be worth your time to flip through this if you do get one uh, to learn a little bit of history about Wall Eversharp. One item that held onto my attention probably a little more than it should have was the removable tray. It's covered in this poly fleece material that's just so darn soft. Uh, it's like the perfect bedding for a fountain pen. Uh, but anyways, getting away from that, the pen actually comes in this protective plastic case that holds it perfectly. Um, I, I just can't see any way that this pen could be damaged during shipping. I mean, they'd probably have to go all Ace Ventura on it to damage it. But anyways, let's really look at this pen because the finish is absolutely astounding. I'm really glad I went with the cobalt blue finish because there's a lot of character to it. Depending on the light you're in, you're going to see a wide range of tones. It's, it's really, really cool. But it gets even better. All the parts of the clip are interchangeable with the vintage senior skylines. That means the clip, the clip retaining ring, the clip reinforcement, and the derby will be able to be used to restore your vintage skyline cap. And here shortly, you'll be able to buy these brand new from Wall Eversharp. If we continue to take a look around the cap, uh, we'll go to the back side and take a look at this teeny tiny engraving that says Wall Eversharp Skyline. The amount of attention and detail on this pen is just astounding. And it really shows off in the cap here with the engravings both on the back side and on the clip. But let's not stop there. Let's have a look at this number five size stainless steel nib. Now even though it's a smaller size nib, it actually fits the pen really well. It looks very proportional, and it's got a pretty decent imprint and overall design to it. And here around the back, we get a look at the feed that was computer designed um, to provide enough flow for the semi-flexible nib. And you can actually take it apart very easily, just pull it straight out. And this is what you get for not rinsing beforehand, you inky fingers. But anyways, the feed does a remarkable job providing adequate flow, and I'll show you a little bit more of that in the writing sample. Now, putting everything back together, there is a proper orientation. If we rotate the section here a little bit, there's a small flat surface, which you can see right here, where the bottom of the feed will slide into. Now that will make sure that the nib and the feed are in the proper orientation and it'll just slide back in perfectly fine. 
All the Skyline fountain pens are cartridge converter fillers, and this one features a threaded converter, which adds a little bit of reassurance that you're getting a secure connection and you're not going to make a mess. Now, the Technic and the Award Collection are the only ones that feature barrels that remove from the section. The other pins have about a third or a quarter of the rear of the barrel that unscrews. This means that only the filling knob of the converter is exposed, and if you wanted to use a cartridge, you have to use a Waterman Long Style cartridge. Now, the size of this pin is adequate, but it almost has to be used posted. The great thing is the cap post awesomely. I mean, look how deep it posts down there on the barrel. It's super tight, and it's almost like the cap just gets sucked onto the rear of the pin. If you're familiar with the vintage Skylines, this one falls right in between the Senior and the Executive. It's 136 millimeters capped, and the Senior is about 133, and the Executive is about 141. So it's a really nice sized pen. For the writing sample, I'm going to use the new Walt Eversharp Wallberry ink, which made its debut at the DC Pen Show, and I was able to snag a bottle of it before it became available to the public. Now don't worry, this should be available very soon, probably within uh, the end of this month. In general, it's a really nice ink and I've been very happy with it, but we'll have a more extensive review on it later. By now, I'm sure you're all cursing me for taking so long to get to the good part. But you should know I always save the nib for the end. You'll be very happy to know that the nib in the new Wall Eversharp Skyline is phenomenal. The medium width is true to size and the flow is spot on. It's not too wet and it's not too dry. But the best part by far is the semi-flex ability of this nib. Now, being a modern semi-flex nib made from stainless steel, it's not going to have the same feel as a vintage semi-flex pen. But then what modern nib does? Due to its stainless steel construction, it's going to take a little bit of effort to spread the tines. And your hand is going to get fatigued fairly quickly, but it's oh so worth it. I just wish the nib was available in a fine so that it would increase that line variation and make it much more noticeable. But then again, you can always send it off to a nib meister to have that kind of work done. With a little bit of practice and a little bit of control, you can get some really nice flex out of this pen. I mean, just take a look at this example here. Okay, I wanna take a small break here to talk to you about the ceramic coating on this nib. Now this is something I don't believe we've ever heard of on any other nib before. And it's being marketed as supposedly making the nib a lot smoother. Well. For this particular pen, it was no smoother than any other pen I've ever used. Now, the ceramic coating may make a nib smoother, all things being equal, but when I flipped this nib over and looked at it through a loop, I noticed the finish was much more dull in appearance to other nibs. And I'm gonna try and show that to you here with this picture. Now I've included a, a vintage Parker Vacumatic because that shows up later in the video, but the real comparison is between the, the $20 Schaefer VFM that has a medium nib and the Skyline with the medium nib. You can see the difference in how shiny the VFM is over the Skyline. It's, it looks like it's been polished to a, a mirror shine and it really shows up in that black dot on the left tine. You can see the, the sharp edge of that black circle where on the Skyline nib, it just kind of looks like the edge blurs into the rest of the nib. It's, it's a dull finish. And this is what has the most impact on how smooth it is. I mean, all things being equal, the tines were aligned, um, it, it wasn't scratchy, but that dull finish had a little bit more resistance gliding over the paper than it than that Schaefer VFM does. And I'm going to try and show this in this upcoming writing sample. I want you to really listen to the writing samples of each pen here because that's going to tell you the most difference between these notes. And yes, that is my daughter laughing in the background. Don't worry, she's fine.
So I hope you were able to hear the difference between the two nibs there. And it's not that there's a, a big difference in smoothness. They're both very smooth, but they do feel very different. Now, what's the, the practical application of this? Well, essentially you're paying for that ceramic coating that's not doing anything because the nibs aren't being polished properly. So it's just adding to the cost of the pen with no benefit to you. The other slight issue I noticed with this pen was that the inside edge of the tines were very sharp. Now, during normal writing, you're not even going to experience this. You wouldn't know it. But once you start to flex the tines, those edges are going to catch the paper a little bit, and it's going to feel scratchy. It's going to feel rough. Now, on vertical strokes, it's, it's okay. It's not bad at all. But if you try and make any kind of horizontal movement before the tines are fully closed, it's going to be very scratchy and in some instances it'll even tear some of the fibers in the paper now it's not going to tear through the entire sheet of paper but it'll pick up enough fibers that the ink will start to feather and it's just kind of generally lowers the whole experience now i've used quite a few flex nibs and i have experienced this on all kinds expensive not expensive um, i've reviewed several omos pens with with good flex in them and i haven't noticed the the sharp inside edges on those that they've been very smooth when I flex them. Um, this is something that could be taken care of at the factory with just a little more attention to the finishing steps of the nib. But you know, really, it, it's not a huge deal. If you practice a little more, this is something that you can resolve on your own. Um, I found that when I slow down and make more deliberate strokes, especially concentrating on the areas where you transition from vertical to horizontal, uh, making sure you release the pressure and let the tines come back together, it's really going to improve the riding experience. It's going to be a lot smoother. The inside edge of the tines are going to be less likely to, to catch the paper and dig into it. And it's just something that comes from practice and this was something I wasn't used to because I use a lot more vintage flex pens and the tines are a little bit smoother and it allows me to write a little bit faster. I suppose you could say I, I could be a little bit more careless and, and the nib was more forgiving. So the, the nib in the Skyline isn't as forgiving as those vintage pens. So just uh, spend a little bit more time with it, get a little bit used to it and uh, it shouldn't cause you any problems. The last thing I want to talk about is the feed. Now this is supposed to be a computer aided design that ensures adequate ink delivery for even the flexible nib. And for the most part, it does a really good job. Now, if you've ever used the flex nib and say like a noodler's pen, you're probably familiar with how much tweaking is required to get the flow to, to keep up with the nib. You're not gonna have any of these issues with the Skyline. Um, in, in very few instances, I was able to get the nib to railroad. Um, this was after writing a good, you know, full 8x11 page of flexible writing. You might experience a, a letter or two where the pen railroads, but it was far from being an issue. Um, at the most, you know, cap it, let it sit, take a drink of water, come back to it, and it's going to be ready to go for another page. Um, it was actually very, very good. I was surprised by how well the feed could keep up with the nib, and I pushed the, the nib pretty hard quite often. Overall, I'm actually really happy with this pen. Um, I know it, it may have sound like I've been overly critical of the nib, but considering that it's being marketed with that ceramic coating and with a semi-flexible nib, I felt that these are issues that needed to be addressed um, because after all, this isn't a $20 noodler's pen with flex. Uh, it's, it's a $265 pen um, that is actually a big investment for a lot of people. So I want you to know exactly what you're getting. I'm just going to actually leave you with a little bit more flex writing um, and I'm going to include a little bit of that uh, Parker Vacuumatic with uh, some flex in there as well. So uh, I hope you enjoy the review. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them below. And also check out my full written review at fpgeeks.com. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye-bye.